Hi, this is Frank with a Frank Opinion. In my last video, I talked about a comedian, but really an extremely progressive social and political commentator by the name of Jimmy Dore, star of the Jimmy Dore sh uh, show on YouTube, that I supported and thought he was absolutely correct in motivating, forcing really, progressives in the House to withhold their vote for Nancy Pelosi for another term as Speaker unless she brought Medicare for All to a full House floor vote. I mentioned that I thought he was absolutely dead on and correct on this because as a person who once went through community organizing school, you have to force a yes or no on the part of your target. In this case, the prime target is Nancy Pelosi. But the other targets, secondary but absolutely crucial to this, are those members of Congress right now who campaigned and are there suggesting that they are staunch progressives on Medicare for All, on climate change, on raising the minimum wage, what have you. The new ones that just came on board and others that may be members of the progressive uh, Congressional Caucus, etc. Forcing them, because of public opinion, because of your protest and your support of the idea that Jimmy Dore has put forward, to ask them to be courageous and tell Nancy, we are not voting for you for another term as House Speaker unless you bring Medicare for All to a House floor vote. So that we can see who's really for Medicare for All that has co-sponsored and who's not but has co-sponsored, as well in putting pressure on Democrats that are part of the Congressional Progressive Caucus that have not co-sponsored Medicare for All and the rest of Democrats in the House that for some unbelievable reason have declined to sponsor a bill that would provide health insurance as a right for every American from birth to death. So what is Nancy Pelosi scared of in terms of not bringing Medicare for All to a House floor vote? There are 22, 222 Democrats in the House, maybe 223 depending on some undecided uh, election results. There are only 118 co-sponsors of Medicare for All. So the chances of Medicare for All, if it goes to a floor vote, passing, so that it can be sent to the Senate, is unless lots and lots of Democrats go through a simultaneous come-to-Jesus moment, or are hypnotized by an extremely good hypnotist, this is not going to pass. But again, what it will do was give you citizens a clear view of who supports Medicare for All on the House side and who doesn't. You want a yes because that's going to give you energy. It's really a win even though it doesn't pass because then you know what you got to do. And if you get a no, that's a win too because that gives you a cause for anger and that is also a motivator in trying to organize around a common good a public policy that should be enacted decades ago. So, what could Nancy be afraid of? Nancy has two choices here. She calls for a floor vote. I really think there's a win for her in this. I think that she will become, if not beloved, uh, that may be a stretch too far, but she certainly will be a whole, like, whole uh, better life than she is now. She is one of the most loathed politicians in the United States. This will help her tremendously. Committed co-sponsors on the House side, our representatives, your representatives, that have signed on as co-sponsors, those 118, will also win because they will have been vindicated. That will give them some additional steadfast moral courage to continue being co-sponsors and hopefully to bring others on board of their other House members. 
the 87% of registered Democrats by the Kaiser Family Foundation poll recently, and by the way, other polls basically are in the 85% uh, above of registered Democrats will win. This amounts to years and years of work by Medicare for All leaders, advocates, on the ground, grassroots groups since 2003. It's not just the last six years. Representative John Conyers introduced H.R. 676, the gold standard really, for Medicare for All in 2003. By 2018, it had gone up to 124. Inexplicably, Pramila Jayabal decided to rewrite the bill and only wound up with 118 co-sponsors, six less than the 15 years of work on the old H.R. 676. It would seem to me that when you rewrite a bill, it's because you know that you're going to get additional sponsors, not less. But let's leave that aside. So the Med for All movement gets energized again. They know exactly who's really for them, who's not, and therefore lays out the work going forward in terms of enacting Medicare for All. The ultimate target being President Joe Biden. Our democracy wins. Oh, it's not that we're going to have a fabulous democracy right now. There are lots of research papers that we really don't have one that your vote, my vote, in terms of a public policy issue, means close to nothing. Statistically, zero. But it does give a shot in the arm to it. It teaches citizens that if they put pressure, that they may be able to get somewhere. It also gives the donors of our Haas representatives a little bit of a pause. And let me come to the if Nancy rejects the call, this will only increase the animus towards her, the vitriol towards Nancy. Does she want to, at her age now going forward, want to be in that category? I don't think so. I hope not. And it'll take mid for our co-sponsors that are not really there 100%. They lose because if they don't vote for the amendment to, uh, for this to bring it to the full House vote, and if they don't vote yay, they will be exposed. So med for all co-sponsors that are not really, that are there just for show, they lose. Democracy loses because corporate donors and the wealthy elite that have been controlling our country's domestic and foreign policy for the last 20, 30, 40 years will also win if we don't do this. Basically, it's our job. It's our job to support Jimmy Dore, our current Thomas Paine, who wrote the Common Sense pamphlet that kind of uh, sparked the attention of our founding fathers leading to the American Revolution. Well, in a, in a way, uh, Mr. Dore reminds me a little of that in his causing a spark with regard to the body politic, the discussion around this notion that we force the uh, progressives in the House to say to Nancy, we're withholding our vote for you for another two years as Speaker unless you bring H.R. 1384 to a full House vote. We ceded our job to our representatives a long time ago. And guess what? They ceded the jobs that we entrusted them with to make our lives better, to fight for the common good, to increase our quality of life around a sustainable, livable, livable wage, around health care that's not tied to employers, around student debt, climate change, etc. They ceded it to their corporate donors. Well, guess what? Our representatives in my mind, those that have fully ceded their responsibility towards us and given it to the corporate donor class and the wealthy elite have gotten an F uh, minus grade. F minus. And try to get somebody in the next election that does a better job. Because I don't know what school you went to, 
but F minus is a failing grade. Unacceptable. Thank you.